either across the nuclear threshold or somebody, Israel or maybe the United States, is going to stop that regime. You have the Chinese um, making trouble for Japan over these little islands, the Sinkaku Islands, making trouble for their neighbors in, in the Philippines over this and that shoal, uh, making trouble for the Vietnamese, being very assertive in uh, their what they conceive to be their territorial waters. Other people think that they are uh, international waters. It's a scarier place. There is disorder in the world. And it's picking up. What about the Middle East? There was so much promise, Matt, about the Arab Spring a year ago, but uh, a lot less promising now. Sure, you have the problems in Egypt with a very difficult transition. You know, Libya, we obviously know what happened there at Benghazi in a country that's very unstable. Even Tunisia's not doing that well. But I think, you know, when you have crisis and chaos, there is an opportunity for American leadership. And what you, you would need is a president who would have a kind of grand strategy for what do I want to see happen in, in the world in the next four years and how am I going to get there? The, the strategy, though, seems to be, uh, without quite advertising it, America withdrawal and, and retreat in the world. I mean, we're going to cut the gas, the defense uh, budget, and people understand it. We're pulling out of Afghanistan. Uh, uh, we're already out of Iraq. And we've t abdicated doing anything in, in Syria. So the, the message around the world, isn't it, is that the U.S. is going to be much, going to lead a lot less than it has. I didn't say we, we had the right strategy. I think we, should, we could have the right strategy, and it is an opportunity. Well, but it, look, you know, look, there is an analogy here. In the 1920s, it became clear that the victorious powers, the United States, France, Britain, weren't prepared to enforce the global order that they had imposed at the Versailles settlement. And it became obvious to countries like Germany and the new Soviet Union that they could violate that order with impunity. And so beginning around 1922, you had two decades leading to the Second World War of this sort of double process, so-called revisionist regimes that wanted to revise the structure of global power and the status quo powers who weren't prepared to enforce it. Today, there's one status quo power, and under this administration, as Matt said, it's not... Well, is it. Iran the test case for whether or not these countries are going, Europe and the United States in particular, are going to enforce this world order? Is, I, is that the... the I, I, look, you have three presidents, President Clinton, Pre, uh, Bush, and Obama have said explicitly that a nuclear Iran is unacceptable. So if the Iranians are allowed to walk across that threshold with no opposition, that is going to demonstrate to other would-be aggressive regimes that there's just there's, there's no cop on, on, on the street, and that's is, what's happening. Is this the year for the showdown then on Iran? Look, um, simply as a matter of industrial mechanics, how much uranium you need to enrich to get to a bomb, this is the year. We've been saying that for a while, though, and somehow there's a, 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 a computer computer virus or something that happens that keeps kicking it down. You're saying this is almost yeah, but it's not, it's not an ever-receding horizon, and the International Atomic Energy Agency takes inventories of Iran's nuclear stockpiles, just how much, how much they have and how deeply it's, it's buried. The, look, you saw Benjamin Netanyahu at the UN in September right. draw literally a, a, a red line. Both American intelligence and Israeli intelligence have basically come to a consensus view that late in the spring of 2013, you're going to have that threshold moment. You know, Matt, you've been the optimist among our group <laughs> on, on the Arab Spring, and I think you may, you've made a very strong case for it, particularly after the dictatorships uh, for so many decades right. in that part of the world. Uh, give us some reason to think that this could turn out better than it looks to be turning out now. Well, it's not over. And I think what you're seeing, the, the struggle in Egypt on the ground over the Constitution, over power, it is not over. I think the worst thing is you know, to, to write them off because they're somehow genetically ill-disposed to democracy. Democracy. There's a vibrant process inside, but there's also decades of authoritarian political tradition in these countries that have to be worked through and tossed over. And this is a very hard, it was hard in Europe, in Eastern Europe, it was certainly hard in South Africa and Latin America, but I think there is some hope that the dynamism of those places can still carry them through. Sure, if, in 50 years it's going to work out great. Well, I think <laughs> and there's, there's no a, alternative, by the way. If, if there's a theme to what we're saying here is that the United States has to play an active leadership role rather than a passive leadership role. If the United States is passive and Barack Obama to a certain extent represents democratic ideas that it should be more passive, this is the kind of world that results. I think places like Egypt and even Syria we're looking to the United States to at least have a presence in this transitions, but we have not, and we're seeing the results. Where do you think, the, other than Iran, where are the, the potential uh, flashpoints in this coming year? 
Look, there are many. One of them is we, we, we don't talk about Europe enough. The crisis in Europe has not turned a corner. It's going to get dramatically worse. And the scenes that you've started really? to see in, 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 in Portugal, Spain, uh, uh, Italy, there is deepening political dysfunction in the European Union. That's one place to look. That's going to encourage Russia to make uh, moves, of its, uh, uh, moves of its own. Um, you mentioned South Africa. South Africa is not going in a good direction. It was supposed to be the most optimistic spot on, uh, uh, on the African continent. So I don't really see many bright spots. Maybe New Zealand, but someone told me even the New Zealand economy is <laughs> heading south. All right. Still ahead, counting down to Obama.